So you can see here, this is in Asiado, which we've already showcased. Uh, this is obviously going in and utilizing some of our new building blocks UI for the doors. And then here's a scan wave, and you can see that, that I'm looking at that data pad, and then it, you can move around, and it's giving me that information. So right now, it's just giving you the basic high-level information in terms of the names and things. Uh, but you will also have more detailed information depending on, you know, contextually what the item is. And what you're seeing here is part of the player interaction system. So you can just, even though that's kind of, of a complex area, there's lots of little things that you can interact with, but you're getting confidence of, oh, cool, I can, I can grab that or I can use the data pad. And you, you're not having to go into interact mode. You're not having to be driven by the cursor. You can go in and just press F or interact with it. And, you know, you've probably seen this in plenty of AAA games, but they don't have the detail and at scale that we do. So we wanted to make sure that that system is really robust. But hopefully, it, it gives you kind of yeah. an idea of. And, I, and I'd also for. say that, like, part of the idea is that, that you know, there's the you know there's the default action, which in this case is what you see when you're on it when it says grab or uh, or you know I think there's a few other ones that you can be using default action. But the icon, the the. All right. So I want to see this clip. I haven't seen it yet. Let's let's roll FPS two. So what you're seeing here is that he's going to do a scan wave in a moment. Essentially what you'll see is that it's now penetrating through the walls and now you can start to see uh, the slavers that are in this environment. Now these slavers don't necessarily have a radar scanner so they're not able to pick you up. So what will happen is when you do a scan wave or a charged scan wave, your signatures will basically um, skyrocket. So that's what will give you away to other people. So in the PvP environment you're only getting, you know, it's, it's a big risk. You, if you want to do it, but you're giving away your location. So if, you know, if you're willing to do that, then so be it. But in a more of a PvE environment, what we're going to do is we're going to have tailored. Some, some enemies will have radar and scanning and some won't. So if they do, then they'll be like, hey, I've just been pinged, and they'll get your location, and then they'll go and investigate. So what you're seeing here you know, on that video is kind of a, a more a wider, broader area and seeing through the walls, whereas the first one is kind of a more limited scope. And you can, you know, it's up to the player to choose which yeah, one they want to do. Fully finished. And then Jared will do a wonderful, we'll do a a updated version of the 2013 tour that I did with Aaron, uh, but it will be in a much uh, bigger environment. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, yeah, if we can. All right, uh, ladders. So obviously this, as you can see, this is final art. It's absolutely. So this is great. taken directly from Squadron 42. No, it's obviously a test map. But you can see here that, as Chris said, it, it, the, the, you know, the level of inertia is, is still block out phase, but you can see that we're actually starting to get that you can grab on, you can go straight into a mantle or a vault, you can go straight into the pull-ups. And the thing is that what you're seeing here is, you know, while this is just an test map, a lot of these are providing design ethos to then feed into the PU. So if we've got derelicts and we've got environments that we want the player to go and do missions in, we don't just necessarily just have to lie on, you've only got jump. Well, you only can do vault and mantle. And right there, we did a we did a jump onto halfway onto a ladder, and here we're looking around to the left, to the right, yeah, and you can jump off the ladder at any point. You can slide down it. You can do all sorts of things. Wow, we got a bit bit of a sneak peek at the end. Yeah, so we're gonna fight an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> the boss, the true boss. And we jump across to get on the ladder there. And again, these are all the block out animations. Uh, and uh, oh, I wonder what that is. What Someone is that? accidentally put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But the other thing Back as well. Back to our spaceship. Yeah. I mean, the other thing to say about uh, about the traversal is while we're highlighting uh, ladders. That's uh, who we're looking at here. Well, and as Chris says, in terms of you know here we go the, the, the EVA, this is what you're seeing here is that you'll probably see some of it in the third person. The thrusters are not um, firing because. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the old VFX, um, yeah. but it's also the old VFX code. So we haven't part of the proper, this is a, a current PU suit versus what we'll have as a new one with the proper like pack that has the thrusters in the right position. And when you go forward, the thrusters going from the back. So what you're actually seeing here is you've, you've actually connected to this surface. So now it's almost like you're in a prone situation, but this is going to be what more, more our new prone will be. Again, you've got full 360 degrees, you can just move your mouse and you look all the way behind and, you or all the way in front. And right now we're moving along here, not because we're thrusting, because we're using our hands exactly. to move ourselves along and we're looking around as we're doing that. If we went out to the third person here, you would sort of see us moving our hands around. I think we'll see it a little later on. There we go, here we go. So we're just sort of pulling ourselves along 
And if we wanted to at this point, we could stop and we could push off against it, and then we would just go floating out into space. So that's the sort of idea of what we call push, push pull. Um, and so what and you're so seeing here, he just, yeah, he just yeah, pushed wow. himself off. So what you're seeing here, that that's actually um, kind of you're just floating alongside the actual um, this fin of this uh, Asiata station, and this is actually keeping you in this orbit. And then if you did, and that's just you just push forward and go. Wow where you can actually jump off into space. But then this becomes one of the, if you look at physical traversal, where you've got jumping and mantling and vaulting, this is where we have zero G push pull. We have the tractor beam that kind of pulls you around an EVA. And then we have your EVA pack, which is limited by your resource of EVA fuel. So this allows you to kind of manipulate and, and go in EVA and allows us as developers to build EVA traversal spaces, both wide ranging and both small scale. So yeah, here's, here's, I mean, we were before in first person looking around, but here's us cutting out the third person to actually show you what your, your character and body's doing. And so there's a lot of, I mean, and these are still block out animations actually, but so there'll be a lot more like nuance or, or fidelity to it. But yeah, you have, you have a lot more um, control, uh, you know, directional sense, uh, ability to look around, ability to stop yourself. Uh, so I think, you know, in this one, we're going to come up close to the glass above it. Yes. And you're actually going to see us, like, if you fly into something, you sort of arrest, just, again, block out animation. But you're going to, as we get down close to it, I think we're going to come down. You'll see uh, as uh, uh, our character comes down here, our player comes down here, yep, uh, put our hands out to brace ourselves to stop ourselves on the glass here. Uh, so all of that's, like, systemic. It's that's not That's not marked up or anything. It's all ray casting, seeing of things, you brace yourself when you come up against, hold on, arrest your thing, you can push off against things. So we've spent a fair amount of time in engineering on all this, but it, it's not just for Squadron, it's gonna be, you know, it's obviously useful in some of the environments of Squadron. This is one of them, obviously, the acid out of space, and you're going to look down on the slavers that you saw in the earlier scan. Uh, but, you know, the use of this in the, you know, the PU is gonna be massive. And also the big thing that Chris said there is, it's systemic. There's no markup. If you want to go and climb all over a ship, you can do. If you want to climb over a space station, you can do. If you want to climb over a, anything that's in EVA, it has a surface, you can, and you can put your hands on it. It's got a big enough space to put your hands on it. It will. You know, so. Let's play the video. Let's see the video. Let's the video. Right. And you can, We've you hyped can this up it. now. Hyper trial is yeah. the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. Here we go. So you can see here, this is actually a, um, slaver, a, pod. a slaver pod. So It yeah. closes down. It's on the floor. We're going to activate it. Lever takes up now, grab Lev's arm, you get hold of it, bam. And by the way, our new, the new interaction system's not working yes. in, in this demo here. This is a separate build. But we're, you know, as you can see, it's getting pushed over. Bulkheads. Bulkheads. But this is essentially a, a really big improvement for us because we want, you know, we want physical cargo and we, we want physical cargo to be a really a big deal in the PU, that you have to move that cargo, you have to make decisions on how long it's going to take to load it up, not just buy it from a kiosk and it appear in your ship. So this gives us the ability to do that and, like Chris says, move much larger things than what you'd normally be able to push as a human being. Yeah, I mean, this happens to be just a, a slaver pump, but you know, obviously you'd be pushing, uh, you know, as long as it's grab lever equipped and has the sort of hover device, then. Uh, you, you know, like I said, you could have large uh, shipping containers and stuff like that. And this is all underpinned by our grav -like technology. So the same, you know, if it, as a dragonfly, or eventually you'll be hopefully be able to move much larger ships if you need to rearrange them, or yeah. you know, when you're moving things around uh, on your homestead or whatever, whatever we do eventually. And I've actually, we've actually had this working on a planet. So you can just push this over planet terrain. You don't let go, you stay stable. Because uh, it, it doesn't actually undulate uh, unless, there's, unless there's something actually physically touching it. So it allows it to be much more stable. And what we want to do for your uh, cargo loading is that we'll use a system similar to the cargo grid that you'll be able to snap things on top of it. So when you, if you have a flat platform, you'll be able to snap cargo boxes onto it so they won't fall off. And then you'll be able to you know, reliably move them without frustration. And again, you can see some of our design ethos coming through is that we're trying to remove the barrier to entry. We're trying to remove the, the control mechanism, the things that frustrate you as you play the game and kind of make that a lot simpler. I see this and all I can think about so, is Spock and the 
Yeah. Photon torpedo tube. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Very cool. It's like, uh, let's take a look at the quantum boost clip that we have uh, so we can see it one more time here. So just to call out, that's going to be the old HUD. Yeah, that, yeah, that is the old HUD. That's too busy. Right, that's so. the next old HUD. <laughs> yeah. Earlier yeah. we were showing the old, old, old HUD. So we've done a scan here. Those are, that's also the old yeah. point of interest because the point of interest will be just points. Yeah. But basically we've done a scan. We've got some points of interest that are uh, you know, multiple 10 Ks away. And you can see the distance there. It says 13,000 kilometers on the right hand side. So this is obviously just placeholder yeah. UI for the quantum boost. And we've, Again, you can just boost over there. Yeah. And it obviously has this interactive gameplay, which obviously went into... Uh, yeah, and this, by the way, is that, that's all programmer work in progress from Yogi uh, on uh, the quantum boost um, mechanism, because you're just going to have to stay in the zone to keep in boost, otherwise you'll fall out of boost. Uh, but we've gone over to the, the, the planet here. So what it's allowing you to do is sort of have that mid-level traversal and investigate things uh, without having to, uh, you know, spend forever medical mission I've got a marker I can go cool I can get a scan of the lo local live the area and go right yeah. this person's injured oh th his body's injured too oh he's got a tier one injury I'm going to go and help him before he bleeds out because I can see his health and, and you'll be able to see that via this information yeah it, it allows you to detect you know, uh, saboteurs or intruders Absolutely. but then you know using like the relay network and where the saboteurs and intruders can start pulling fuses and start hiding themselves from yeah. the well, this will also underpin resource network yeah, yeah so, so a different way so the one those individual there is gonna is going away to hide behind that orangey boxy whatever we want to call that yeah. color so that's the player gonna essentially. Go. this is essentially a standard for the player the other two ai are searching for him at the moment uh, the white spheres you see are basically cover hiding points. a cover spots. And so as AI, this is a sort of debug mode, as the AI goes around and they search, the, the spheres go away indicating that, okay, they've checked that place, so no one's actually there right. hiding out in cover. So, and they, they're both kind of working together. So their, their logic is they need to clear these rooms first, and then once the rooms are cleared, they can... Sort of go on so they share there. this information. So as they're clearing the cover points, and the cover points are basically all the nooks and crannies in the room, they're clearing the cover points and they're sharing together. So you'd see here that they're going, okay, this guy's coming in and go, okay, there's an open vent. Again, this is systemic. He's just coming to investigate this vent, but he's not cleared this entire room yet, so he's not going to progress. And he's just going to go and check the rest of the room alongside his buddy. And once they've then cleared it, they'll then progress. But again, here would be, you know, you'd hear them talking to each other. I've not found him yet. Where is he? And again, if that, we've got it's, vents in here. Yeah, he's checking another vent there. Yeah, so we, we, don't, we also have other usables. So it might be, a, you know, something you can hide in. Or and he, they're going through systemically, checking the usables, checking the cover points. And you can see there's only a few balls left now. The ones at the bottom right, and then the ones at the back that he's clearing. And then the, one of these enemies will then go, OK, we've checked everything in here. I'm now going to progress to the next space because that's where you know they're not in here. I think yeah. you're going to go this way. So you've come back. There's only one set of uh, ones left. He's going to check it. He's going to come through here. Cleared those. So now he's coming around here. And fire yeah. away. And what you're seeing here with the bar, which starts off, is something that we added for the perception. So they start off in green, and then it gets mapped. We wanted to just kind of show you a bird's eye view. So we've just turned God mode on so you can see it. And you can see the labels here. So we've got the defenders that kind of push to cover points. Then we've got the, the pusher who's kind of pushing towards you. And then we've got the strafer who is kind of like taking more of a wider angle. Now, there are some similarities between all the behaviors, it, but it depends on what happens. So whether they go to cover, you know, a pusher, for example, can still go from cover to cover. A defender can still go to cover to cover. So it's not like you've got these binary choices. It's about weighting the different choices throughout the behavior so that the AI provides something different, but also applies pressure to you as a player so that you're having to react to the AI. You know, right now, our current AI, you basically get the jump on them, and you can just take them all out. But in reality, what we want is we want... <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we have one more video showing the tactics yes. situation. Let's take a look at that. So this is just a short version where we... But again, it's the same uh, AI. Uh, that have been dropped in, and, and they, they roll the dice for, they don't always become defenders or always become pushers or strafers. Uh, it can be random every time, so the combat experience is different.
-huh. So you and you might all be pushers and they might all be defenders, but the way it works is if one of them rolls a defender, then the weight for them to roll another defender is lower. So essentially here you can see here that uh, he's getting tagged a lot just because we want to show you the behavior themselves right. rather than you know, get taken out. So he's being a bit more aggressive than you probably would be able to. Now that's going to make uh, uh, the eventual eventual speed runs a lot harder because they're not just Goombas that do the same thing every time. You can't no. memorize the patterns. And the other thing you might have noticed as well is that we're starting to have traversal opportunities for the AI. So they're not always just on, yeah. on the base they map. Could, they could mantle over, you know, you, in fact, I'm not sure we've Crouch, seen mantle, but climb yeah, ladders. They can, they can jump over railings and, and, and push you or they can climb up onto things and shoot down on you. Uh, they can use ladders, they can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so we, we're putting a fair amount of work into AI traversal, so they, they sort of understand the environment and how to traverse over it other than just flat ground. Um, and of course, you know, on some of that, I think you saw some of that, he didn't get hit right away. Some of the early shots missed and then they hit him. That's kind of what Rich was talking about earlier. Because, um, you know, it, 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 which says it's very yeah, and at the end ones, it'd be like, you know, straight in, straight out, you lower him down onto the yeah. floor, it takes, you know, stand, essentially. Yeah. It's like, we will allow you to do things like that, and if you want to go and kind of like level them yourself, but you'll also just be able to level them yeah. by naturally playing what you like in the game. That Pilates area in Microtech. Yeah. Well, we were, yeah, we were, we had all the, the old thing you felt. And then the other thing that we're going to do, which will tie into well, the last movie. Well, I, well I'd, I'd roll the yeah. uh, clip that yeah. we have and we can. Let's roll the mobile glasses, take a look. So the first page that you'll see that's coming up right now, kind of like the overview. So, you know, it's the overview of your player, it's the overview of your ship, and then it's like your primary objective. So, and, and all of these uh, widgets that we call them. Are kind of shortcuts to the kind of the main focus you can areas. See alerts as you go to the other yeah. page. So. so you can see here we've got your messages. So this is kind of like uh, the email client, and then on the right we've got kind of like the ship chat that's coming in with, you know, general ship chat from the AI. Which again, it's kind of just making it believe that you're in this you know believable environment or a real life environment rather mm -hmm. than just you alone. Uh, so responsive compared to the old one. Yeah, and it's just a lot, it's a lot cleaner and, uh, you know, the information, it's something that we've tried to be consistent across the HUD and the MOBI is that we want to make sure that we're giving you clean information. And you can see, here. like, the alerts. So the alerts are now cleared from the, the messaging app because we've see, read the messages, so it's gone. But there was an alert down on our mission side here, but now we've gone and looked at it, it's cleared. So that's the system. It's a framework. So, like, inside the, you know, you'll get, you know, notifications or alerts. Oh, look, I got a new message over here. I'll click over to it. Now we're back. Um, and the biggest thing as well is when you, it's like in everyday life. Uh, but the last word on things shouldn't come from me. Let's throw it over uh, to, to the peanut gallery, to the, our, our steam group of, of, <laughs> of, of guests and visitors. Uh, Chris, oh, I should, hold on, let me get in here. There we go. Get in here, get in here. Hey, uh, what do you want to say? Uh, I think I've said quite a lot already. I don't really need to see that no, much no, you more. No, no, you can do like 15 uh, minutes more. <laughs> well, let me start with back in 2012. <laughs> um, no, I, all I'm going to say is that we wouldn't be here without all of you out there that have supported us over these years and believed in the project and the world and the universe that we're doing. I know everyone that meets everyone from the community out here really appreciates the sense of support and love that everyone puts in from your side and also from our side into the project. So we really appreciate that. Uh, you know, this year's CitizenCon didn't quite have the big flashy demos that we've had in the past, but that's mostly because we've got a huge amount of people heads down uh, working on getting persistent and streaming out and 318, which hopefully we're going to go to Evercati this coming week. Right, Aaron, we think, maybe? We're absolutely working yep. on it. All right, so we'll see Guillaume over here. He's not Mike, so he can't really say <laughs> much, but um, he's uh, our director of development on the Star Citizen Live. Um, and uh, so we're working hard on that for this year, and uh, there's, there's a, that's going to be a massive patch with a lot of really cool features and gameplay in it. And uh, of course, we're working very hard on Squadron 2. Uh, but uh, it's been a great time. It's been an amazing ride so far. I'm looking forward to the future. So you did get someone to be twinsies with you. Yes. There you go. Uh, and thank you very much. Happy birthday, Star Citizen. Happy birthday, the community. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Star birthday. Citizen. Cheers. 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 Uh, let's throw it to Atmo. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. See you next year. Bye, everyone. Bye. Cheers.